Okay, so I clipped out some of Karen, uh, her Dateline interview, her Nightline interview, and then her parents when they spoke with Boston 25. And we didn't get to hear Karen speak at the trial, so I thought this would be interesting to hear her own words about some of this. I don't want to be in the picture. Get over here. He had reached out to me on Facebook and he said, hey, blast from the past, how's things? And when I saw his picture, his profile picture was with several young children. And then it triggered my memory that his sister and his sister's husband had passed away. And uh, he told me, yeah, I have the kids now. I admired that. Um, I thought that was amazing. He would go to work and I would stay with his niece and nephew. All of the breaks that the kids had, we did something. I would call him the patron saint of Canton. He was just very selfless, frugal, and I think you'd be hard pressed to find anyone that didn't care for John. You're alleging that law enforcement officials in this state committed murder and that they're covering it up. Why would they want to be involved in this? Because he's dead. I, I think things went too far. It was late. There was alcohol involved, but they're all family. And there's, there's many of them involved. We had had an argument on New Year's Eve. They were away on vacation, and he became in incoherently drunk. And I ended up ringing in the new year with his niece and nephew. John didn't come back to our room till after 3 a.m. So that was rough. I felt very much taken, a, taken advantage of. He apologized profusely for what happened on New Year's Eve. And he said, if you can't get over it, then you need to spend some time at your house. I, I can't keep apologizing. I don't want to keep rehashing this. Both times I met Brian Albert, he, he seemed like the type of person that you'd be surprised he's out socially because he doesn't seem like he ever wants to be there. Uh, now we're going to hop right into the early morning of January 29th. We were happy, having fun, laughing, uh, just very normal. Did you ever feel you were overserved that night, as no. they say? No, no. When you walked out of the bar, how many drinks had you had? I had had probably about four. The Commonwealth says that you had nine drinks that night. That's what the prosecution says. I, I don't believe they're saying I wasn't in my right mind. I well, they were saying you were intoxicated. I said, can we make sure we're welcome here? Nobody extended the invite to me. I didn't hear the invite extended to you. So I pull at the foot of the driveway. It's snowing. John has no coat on. It's windy. So I drop him off. He goes up the driveway and approaches the side door. And as I see him approach the door, I look down at my phone. I texted him. I called him. And within minutes of him exiting my car, is not answering his phone. Minutes. Hmm. So what, I, what, what happens next? I left. This clip kind of comes in hot and is really fast, but I did find it interesting that this is Karen saying that she did canvas the area the morning looking for John and the places they had been. Canvassing the neighborhood. Just going to drive around in the two square miles that we spent the preceding night. I had told both Jen and Carrie that I cracked my taillight. I said I just hit my car on top of everything, but I didn't look at the damage. And both women said, it's cracked, it's cracked. Calm down, you cracked your taillight. You're okay, let's go look for John. How soon was it when you pulled in there that you saw John's body? Immediately. And what struck me when I saw him was his mouth was open a little bit and his eyes were shut and he had spots of blood in different areas on his face. His eyes were swollen shut, he had blood dripping out of his nose. Is it possible that you might have hit him unwittingly in your admittedly very large SUV? No, not possible. I said, could I have hit him? I said, I hit him. It was preceded by a did and proceeded by a question mark. What I thought could have happened was that did I incapacitate him unwittingly somehow and then in his drunkenness passed out i did not kill john o'keefe i've never harmed a hair on john o'keefe's head uh, next we'll listen to the family members and i feel like these are all really great examples of why you should just not say anything at all until you're acquitted they just seem to be in a happy place you know yeah and spending a lot of time together yes yes Mm -hmm. Vacations together, yep. um, mm -hmm. going out together. During your first discussions with Karen, did she believe she may have hit John? No, 
No. No. She felt she struck something. She said, Dad, I think I struck something. I said, what do you mean? Right? This was in the hospital. Right? She says, I remember, all right, backing up and hitting something. She backs up to go out and search for John O'Keefe. And that's how that vehicle was damaged. Look at it frame by frame. And you tell me whether or not the O'Keefe vehicle, the left rear wheel, does not jetson forward upon impact and return to its previous position. I have an innocent client, period. I'm going to allow it.